first guest tonight is a star of stage, screen, snow, and now space. He plays a self-absorbed billionaire on a botched voyage to the cosmos on Avenue 5. You can see it Mondays on HBO and HBO Max. Please say hello to Josh Gad. <laughs> Good to see you. It's so good to see you. Can we talk for a second about how creepily he said Charlize Theron? <laughs> very... Well, there's some backstory there, yeah, and it's not yeah. creepy, it's affectionate because their kids are on the same soccer team, and then she, oh, right? And she will kiss yeah. you when she sees you, and everybody, the parents, the coaches, his fe friends in the park go bananas <laughs> because yeah, Charlize yeah, is went kissing. From creepy to jealousy all in one. Yeah. Year. Hey, well. Yeah, there's some chemistry there. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Josh. <laughs> How are you doing? You just got back to I the United States, right? I just got right? back from Australia, uh, Friday. How long were you there? Three months. Wow, three that, months. well, that's, that's a great place to be for three months. It's incredible. It's, an, it's a really far place to be for three months. Yeah, right, right. When you have children. Oh, your kids weren't over there with they you. They were there for six weeks, and then they went to school. Okay, that yeah. seems like enough though, right? Six weeks? Yeah, yeah. It, was great. it was great. You know, afterwards they were like, well, you are, every time I would call them, dad, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it was, uh, no, it was, it was a blast. I had a great time. Isn't it funny when you get like the kids, and you're like, oh, I miss the kids, and they probably really miss me, and then you get them on the FaceTime or whatever, and they just cannot they don't give stay. Don't, yeah, they're, yeah, like, they're like, just like, ah! Yeah, dad, I gotta, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta go to this soccer game with Charlize Theron. <laughs> I don't want to be with you. Did you encounter any deadly beasts or uh, creatures in Australia? Australia's got a bad rap because they've got, like, deadly spiders. I love the one guy who's like, yes, I've heard about this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> deadly spiders and snakes and stuff. But I didn't encounter them. <laughs> Good. I, I encountered something else that was uh, pretty uh, weird. It's weird. Okay. So I, I got an apartment in Bondi Beach, which is in Australia, beautiful oh, yeah. beach. Yeah. And and I walked in, and it was my kids last week there. And my daughter walks in, and I'm like, "How cool is this place?" And it was really cool, but there was some weird artwork everywhere. Like, want to say like circa 18th century, or oh. like yeah, just like Game of Thrones style art, just all <laughs> over the place. And there's like a painting of like conquistadors, and like a painting of a woman looking very scared about something, and just like some weird paintings. And my daughter. <laughs> looks at me and she goes, are you sure you want to stay here, Dada? And I was like, oh. sweetie, it's fine. It's just artwork. It's fine. And, and turns out she was very prophetic. Um, so I was staying there. And one night, <laughs> now I don't believe in like ghosts and stuff. It's not like a thing that I'm like, oh, God, yeah. I've had, I've had no experiences with them. But one night I'm there and I, in the middle of the night, I wake up and I hear what sounds like two Spanish men from the 17th century <laughs> whispering to each other over my face. So just imagine waking up and hearing like, Caseros, <laughs> Utera, I was like, what, what's happening right over now? Over your face. Over my face. Uh -huh. So like, yeah, it probably came from like the air duct or something, but it felt in my face. So I go to work the next day and I tell this story. They're like, how did you sleep? And I'm like, not very well. And they were like, why? I said, I heard two Spanish men in my room. And the, one of the people who works there is like, oh, yeah, I've got the piff. This is an Australian accent, by the way. She goes, yeah, I've got the perfect solution for you. What you want to do is get sage, and you want to go around the house and ask them nicely to leave. And I said, OK, where am I? And she goes, I've got some. <laughs> She's like, sage? She's like, yeah. She gives me sage. I swear to God, this is all true. She gives me sage. I, <laughs> I walk around the house. My assistant, Taylor's there. And I'm walking around and I'm going, please go sleep. Please leave. In English, you're saying this? Uh, por favor. <laughs> go away. Hasta luego. Espiritu Santo, hasta luego. And, and so <laughs> I do this, and I got good sleep. This sleep lasted for about two weeks. Oh. Jimmy, no. No. Uh, oh. About two weeks later, I wake up, and the lights are flickering in my bathroom. 
and they hadn't flickered before. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm sure it's just like there's an excuse, like electrical circuit or something, or spirits. <laughs> and so, <laughs> I, I'm freaking out at this point. Now, I sleep with, any of you sleep with white noise, like a white noise app? Yeah. So I've got like a white, same guy. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I do that too. Uh, so I'm sleeping with a white noise app and it goes off. Now this thing doesn't go off unless you push it, unless you stop it, or it's never gone off for me. Right. So I'm really upset at this point. So the next night I test it, and this is, I swear to God, this is all true. I go, and I, I'm mortified telling this to a national audience, but I go, please don't shut off my white noise machine. It'll freak me out. Within a minute, it shut off. Really? Okay. At this point, I'm having a heart attack. <laughs> so I go to work the next day and they go, you look, you look tired. And I said, I am. And they said, what's going on? And I said, they're back. <laughs> and I explained this. Now a co-star, different person completely goes, you've got a haunting going on? I said, yeah. She goes, yeah, I've got someone who can deal with that. I'm like, does everyone in Australia have a guy for this? <laughs> so she says to me, you call this woman and you, <laughs> she doesn't come to your house. She does it remotely. <laughs> now, I should have said at this point, <laughs> off. <laughs> but instead I call the number. Uh -huh. <laughs> call her on the phone? Call her on the phone. I go, do you want to zoom so I can show you around my creepy apartment and maybe like where they're hanging out and you can, she's like, nah, nah, I don't need to do that. I don't have zoom. I'm like, okay, that's problematic. Yeah. <laughs> so instead she goes, just draw out a blueprint. And I'm like, I'm not an artist. <laughs> I'm an overweight actor. Like, what am I going to do? Draw a blueprint of the- Draw a blueprint. So I draw a blueprint. I take a picture and I send it to her. She calls me. <laughs> I'm out, I'm out at dinner. She goes, yeah, there's some weird stuff going on in there. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, you can see that from my rudimentary blueprint? She's like, yeah, I can feel them. So the next day I get a 10 page report of the different ghosts in my house. There's like a mixture. Some of them are like Ghostbusters kind of ghosts. Some of them are really like exorcist style demons, <laughs> according to her. So she gives me this book report and she's like, that'll be 300 American dollars. <laughs> I pay the $300. <laughs> I sleep great. At this point, my assistant is like, you've lost your mind. <laughs> you are not well, this is insane. Five days before we leave, we walk into the apartment. I go into my room. Taylor goes, Josh, can you come here? I go, yeah. She goes, so there's this light on in the room and that light was a broken light bulb that I put in there, and that shouldn't be on. And I said, that's your problem now. <laughs> but I have a great number you can call. <laughs> Josh Gad is here, we'll be right back. Uh, hey, Ryan. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Ryan. Hey! So what are you guys talking about down there? We're talking about dogs. Dog, doggos. <laughs> you know, uh, when you see dogs running in their dreams, they're not. They're drumming. I read that. So, anyway. That is Josh Gad in Avenue 5, season 2 of Avenue 5. Which is um, the the like the idea on this show is so great. It's so <laughs> funny. You played the guy. This character of yours, in case people haven't seen it, is like the owner of of the spaceship. So he owns the spaceship, uh, and he they they were meant to go for a few weeks. That mm. turns into a few months. And then enough things go wrong that it's now eight years before they can get home. And no one on the ship besides a few there's people. A, there's a few people uh, who know this. Yeah. I'm one of them. But it hasn't been told to them. And things are going really bad <laughs> on this ship. Yeah. Uh, that, in that scene, we've come across this group of people on another vessel. Uh, and we go to dinner. And dinner can be 
in space as well as you see. And, and so we go there and we have this conversation. We're trying to get to know them. What we don't, well, I can't reveal it. You'll have to watch, but it's, yeah. it's a pretty great reveal. Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah, there's, uh, it's funny. I don't want to say anything that will ruin it, but yeah, I, I will say that your character is kind of like, uh, well, <laughs> a sharp eyed Twitter user um, said that, you know, noted that it's a little bit like Vince Neil, uh, but. <laughs> Who are you basing this character on? Is this like a Richard Branson type of it's, guy? It's, yeah, Richard Branson by way of Mama Cass. Uh, uh. Yeah, it's, um, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's sort of Branson's hair. It's got a little Elon Musk. It's uh -huh. got a little, um, uh, what's her name, the dropout, uh, the Theranos. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh, I didn't do very good research. Oh, I was just it? sort of like, was like <laughs> these people. Um, and, and so it's sort of like an amalgamation of all of these kind of CEOs who have a lot of time on their hands, a lot of money, and tweet a little too much. Uh, yeah, right. And, you know, he just, he, it's what's amazing about Judd is he gaslights himself. He, he, he really is like one of those guys who, like, tells himself something that is an absolute lie, but he just convinces himself that it's the truth. And it's, uh, it reminds me of certain politicians, but it, <laughs> it's sort of like, it's, it's kind of like this weird docu-style thing now where I watch it every week, and Armando Iannucci, who's a brilliant creator of he Joe did Veep, Veep yeah. Thick of It, uh, Death of Stalin, he's got this ability to sort of tap into these things that almost become prophecies. So last year we did um, an episode where a bunch of people start walking out of an airlock because they don't believe they're actually in space. And they just keep denying that they're in space. And once they walk out, other people on the ship are like, yeah, it's VFX, That's, I've seen that before. And we're like, no, people are dying right now. And it became this sort of weird thing where we shot it before COVID, but it was people being like, yeah, that's not real, that thing is fake. And it was fascinating to sort of see how like this thing almost was art imitating life. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, for sure. With Veep, we saw a lot of that oh, kind yeah. of stuff. Oh yeah. And um, and and you are you, you were just named what a Disney legend? Is that correct? That's right. I was just named. Uh, no. What does that What does that mean exactly? Because the whole cast of Frozen were, or was it just a few of you that got? No, I was uh, I was a little insulted. They ma they made it the whole cast. They made the whole cast. <laughs> so made it slightly less. Special. Not just the main people. And there yeah. were other Disney uh, employees, cast members, as yes. we are called, named legends as well. Right? Yes. No, it was really lovely. It was a lovely ceremony. I I've heard that they give you free tickets and a bunch of stuff, but mm -hmm. nobody's actually called me up yet and said, <laughs> "You get yeah. all these free tickets now." You didn't get anything. Well, I was like, "Do I call them?" <laughs> Do they call me? Like, how does this work? Anthony Anderson was a legend as well. Anthony Anderson was Ellen a legend. Ellen Pompeo. Ellen Pompeo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Weird. I feel like maybe I should. I've been working at this company for 20 years. <laughs> I, what about my little Olaf over there? Yeah, me too. I would what happened to us? I honestly got to tell you. Did you say anything to them about I did, this? Well, I didn't. Well, the funny thing is, is I didn't research who was a Disney legend before I did it, surprisingly. Oh. But you two absolutely deserve to Thank be Disney legends. Thank you for legend. endorsing us as Disney legends. Here now, I'm, as a Disney legend, I don't want to be a Disney legend unless Guillermo and Jimmy are both also Thank Disney you, Josh. <laughs> so wow. I'll give up. I'll give up. Well, if that's not an endorsement, honor. I don't know what yeah. is. You are willing to relinquish your legend yeah. status. Unless I actually get free tickets to Disney. <laughs> and that's true. Josh Gad, watch you on Avenue 5, Monday nights on HBO and HBO Max. We'll be back with Pamela Adlon.